go to chapter 12, pricing strategies. When we talk about pricing strategy, it's simply an approach taken by a business or businesses to decide the amount to charge for their goods or services. It's an approach yes. to decide what you want to charge, the amount you want to charge for a product or a service. Mm -hmm. I think a pricing strategy is clear. Good. So let's read. <clears throat> a strategy is a set of plans designed to meet objectives. Price strategy is part of the marketing strategy of the business. Other strategies such as product and distribution strategy also make up marketing strategy. Marketing strategy is then part of the corporate strategy of the business. Other strategies include production and financial strategy. So a strategy itself is a set of plans designed to meet the marketing objective. So one of them is using the pricing strategy, which is a strategy on what price we have to charge to be able to reach that target we have, we have, you know, we have aligned or we have analyzed the form. So we have other business strategies like financial strategies, uh, production strategies, marketing strategies. All in all, pricing strategy is about being able to find the right price to charge for your products, which will allow you to have a competitive edge over your competitors. So price strategy is therefore a set of plans about pricing, which help a business to achieve its marketing and corporate objectives. So with the pricing strategy, it means you are able to approach the market with the right price. And that allows you to reach your objective, marketing objective and your corporate objective. Yes. So I just go through down. It says the price strategy developed from this could be to increase the average price of the product made by the business. Well, some pricing strategies can be used for new products, such as market, market scheming or penetration pricing. Some strategies may be more suitable for existing products. So there are different approaches to price. So you have to understand the product life cycle also to be able to know the kind of price you charge. If it's a new product, you might use price scheming, like they said here, or penetrating pricing. It's, new, okay. it's a new product. Yeah, and if it's a product that is, is in existence, you might try to find a suitable price, maybe, um, maybe cost plus pricing or psychological price. It depends anyway. But you have to understand the life, the stage of the product to be able to charge the right price. So you won't lose out. The stage of the product. So, so this the stage. Okay. The stage. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah. So we have different types of uh, we have different types of pricing strategy. We have cost plus pricing, but the tracing pricing are there. So we start with cost plus pricing. Business have to set price that generate a profit. One method that ensures that all costs are covered is cost plus pricing. It involves adding a markup to unit cost. So this method is common with retailers. However, one of the drawbacks of this method is that it ignores market conditions. For example, the markup used by, the, by your business may be far too high in relation to the price of rival products. This might result in low sales. Another problem is that it may be difficult to identify precisely all the costs associated with the products, with production of a product, particular product, particularly for multiple products, businesses. One thing about markup pricing, you know, it is when you are charging your price, you have added up the unit cost plus the markup plus times multiplied by the unit cost. It is unit cost plus the markup multiplied by the unit cost. That gives you your price for cost plus pricing. Okay. So the problem about it, do you understand what I'm saying here? Yes. So the problem about it is that for cost plus pricing, if you have incurred more cost than those of your competitors, that means the price you're going to charge will be higher than those of your competitors. Do you get my point or not? Yes, because you have more cost. If you have incurred more cost yeah. than your competitors, it means because you are using cost plus pricing, you will charge a higher price than those of your competitors. The consequence of that is that you, your sales will fall. Mm -hmm. That's the first point. The second point about using cost plus pricing, which is the problem is that you cannot always identify all your costs because they are fixed costs also. They are fixed costs, variable costs. Yes, variable costs can be aligned, can be, you know, can be part of your you can understand your variable cost, but how do you split the fixed cost? And the, way, the only way to, fix, uh, to split the fixed cost is in the long run, where it starts reducing. Do you understand? As long as, as the business continues to increase, uh, expand, its fixed cost will also reduce. Yes. Though fixed cost is always constant, but for the fact that you are expanding, you'll be able to split the fixed cost into those output that has increased. Before now, it was 100 units. The fixed cost is constant. But now you are producing 300 units. You'll be able, the fixed cost will now be split on the 300 units, mm -hmm. not 100 units anymore. Do you understand? So it starts reducing too. Yeah. But in the, at the beginning, it's difficult when you use cost plus pricing because you might not be able to identify all the costs. So because if you have to put all the costs 
on the price of the product, it will be so high that consumers will not be able to buy. Yeah. So that is the point about cost plus pricing. Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah. And from that for using uh, using marker is the price unit cost or the price will be unit cost plus the marker multiplied by the unit cost. I think it's clear. Any question about cost plus pricing? So we we'll go on to penetration, right? Uh, right? Uh, price uh, scheming. Okay. Yeah. So what's the formula for markup now? Markup is a uh, unit plus, uh, unit plus plus markup times. No, when you, the price, you, right. what, what I'm saying is, there's the price charged with markup. That is cost plus pricing. When you charge the price with the markup, it gives you, it means you are using cost plus pricing. Get my point? Price with price. When we are using cost plus pricing, it right. means the price is charged with the markup. So how do you get your markup? Your markup is the selling price now. Oh, okay. Selling price, uh, the selling price minus the cost divided by the cost multiplied by 100. That is the markup in percentage. Yes. Do you get it now? Yes. Sir. The price is the unit cost minus. Plus the. The unit cost plus, the unit cost plus multiplied by the markup yeah. all over the unit cost. But if you are getting the markup from it, the markup is the selling price minus the cost price divided by the cost price multiplied by 100. Yes. I think it's clear now. You just have to switch yes, the formula. Yeah, make the perception. Yeah, then, it's be, then if it is markup now, it will be in percentage. But when they have given you the markup, if they give you the markup, it will be in percentage. So what you have to do with the markup is you find your, you, you would have known your cost of production. Oh, my cost of production is $5. The markup given is 20%. So how do I get my price? So it will be uh, the unit cost now. The unit cost that you have been given plus the unit cost multiplied by the markup divided by the unit cost. That will give you the price. It divides by unit cost again. Yeah, yeah. Unit cost. No, unit cost plus unit cost multiplied by mark uh, by markup will give you the price. Yeah. But if you are looking for the markup itself, it is selling price minus cost price divided by cost price multiplied by 100. Yes. I think it's clear now. Yeah. Good. That is about markup. Then we go to price scheming. So for price scheming, we said businesses, some businesses may launch a product into a market, charging a high price for a limited time period. This is called scheming or trimming. The aim of this strategy is to generate high levels of revenue with a new product before competitors arrive and exploit the popularity of a new product. Why this is unique? Before we go further, when you use price scheming or creaming, you are going to charge a higher price for a new product. Most of the time they do that because they feel like Customers, the perception, the perception of customers about the product will be like a very high quality. If not, a new product so expensive like this. It's a new product and it's so expensive. Yes. So the fuel it is of high quality. So if the kind of product continues to sell in the market, within that short period of time, revenue would increase yes. for the firm. But as soon as other businesses find out that this kind of product is what is bringing more revenue, they will start selling such too. At that point in time, you have to change your pricing strategy. That's what they are saying here. Before other businesses start coming to that market. Mm -hmm. Do you get it or not? Yes. Okay. Price scheme, before, right? yeah, scheme is always for a short period of time. Before customers also, you know, customers also, they'll start looking for alternative as time goes on. Mm -hmm. In the short run, they might not find alternative, but in the long run, they will, they will seek for alternative. Yeah. And how yeah. are they going to seek for alternative? Because they are seeking for alternative, the entrepreneurs will find out that there's a gap in the market and they produce the alternative that is needed. Yes. Do you get it? This method is common. This method is common with technical products. For example, when laptop computers were first introduced, they were over 1,000 pounds. However, they can now be purchased for less than 200 pounds. In many countries, pharmaceutical companies also use this method. They sell new drugs for high prices when they are, for, they are first launched. However, when a patent, a license that prevents competition for a number of years, runs out, competition emerges and prices fall. Charging a high price initially helps such co companies recover high development costs. So, technical products, pharmaceutical companies, because they, they, you know, they spend so much in research and development, so it is expected of them to charge 
a higher price when the product is when the product is finally developed and being launched. But they have the license, they have the patent. But as soon as the patent runs down, other competitors can come into. You know, you have the patent because you are the first to launch the product. So you might have that opportunity based on the fact that you have done so much, you have spent so much on research. Yes. Do you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. yeah. Like the like the patent. You know, businesses, they, so you call it businesses, they give them patents. Why? Because they invested so much in research and development. So you have that patent for maybe two years. And as soon as your patent runs out, other businesses can come in and develop the same product. It's like a barrier for other businesses. It's, well, we, don't call, we don't call it barrier. It's because when you call it barrier, it means that nobody comes in. But right now, it means that exclusively, you are the only one that can produce it. So they want you to be able to recover the development, uh, the research cost of developing that product. Just like the vaccine you mentioned, for the COVID, you know, there was a time it was, uh, which company, I don't know, maybe Roche or, there was yes. the first COVID vaccine anyway. So the point is that when, you when they developed that vaccine, they would have spent so much to develop that vaccine. So the only way to recover and to encourage them is to give them a patent. A patent allows them to, you know, to be the only one. It prevents other from competing, other competitors from going to that market. Yes. So that gives them the opportunity to recover the amount spent. So next time, other businesses would also be encouraged to, to do research and development because they know they will have a patent for it. Yes. Do you understand why there's patents now? Yes. Okay, so as soon as the price, as soon as the product is launched, what happens next is to charge a higher price. That is price claiming. So that at least for that period of time that they have patent for it, they would be able to, they would have recovered the amount spent. research and development. Because research and development is expensive, it's high, it's high cost. Yes. Is it clear? So the advantage of scheming is that high prices are charged in a market where there are people who are prepared to pay them. Yeah, because everybody needs that product, everybody needs that service, everybody needs it. So whatever price is being charged, people will be willing to pay. That's an advantage. This helps to maximize revenue. As the price is lower, other customer groups are drawn into the market. The higher initial, the higher initial revenues help a business to recover the cost of research and development. The higher price also helps to make product appear more prestigious. However, skimming can only be used if demand is pricing elastic. Skimming might also attract competitors into the market. Price skimming allows you to recover your cost. Price skimming allows you to have more revenue. But the, the, the problem about price skimming is that you have to talk about a product that is price inelastic, number one, and also think about how attractive the, the market will be for other people, other businesses, because they find it attractive based on the fact that there's more, much more revenue and profit in that market. Yes. And as soon as competitors come into that market, what happens to revenue? Your revenue would fall because you have to just two customers with them. And it's because, yeah, as soon as more competitors come in, the demand for the product becomes price elastic. Then you won't be able to charge higher prices anymore. I think price scheming is clear. So go to penetration pricing. So go to penetration pricing. Sometimes the business will introduce a new product and charge a low price for a limited period. This is called penetration pricing. The aim of this strategy is to develop a secure initial position in the market from which further progress can be made. This is using this strategy hope that customers are attracted by the low price and they carry on buying it when the price rises. One approach is to offer products at a very cheap rate for trial period, sometimes as low as half price of the even or even free. And that is to offer the first one or few items free or at a low price. Such as driving lessons, such as a strategy, uh, such a strategy is sometimes called an introductory offer. Penetration pricing has a number of benefits. So before I go to the benefits of penetration pricing, for penetration pricing, it means you are charging a price. Uh, we are charging a lower price to gain position in the market. It's a new product, yes. but you are not thinking about the perception of customers regarding the product, but you are thinking about wanting them to use the product so that they can understand how quality the product is to gain a position. You know, customers are conscious about price though. Yes. So because customers are conscious about price, selling a new product at a cheaper rate will mean that 
a lot of customers will buy. And as soon as they find out that the product is of great quality, the demand the demand will come price in elastic, then you can charge a higher price. So transition pricing is not going to be forever. It's charging a lower price for a specific period of time to secure your position in the market before you start increasing it. As long as you secure your position in the market, then you can charge whatever you have to charge. Because at that point in time, customers know more about the product than they can trust to the product. Mm -hmm. So what are the benefits of penetration pricing? One, it is particularly beneficial when products are targeted at middle or low income consumers, consumer group. This is because such groups are more likely to be responsible to low, responsive to low price introductory offers. So one of the advantages is that it can target low income and middle income earners. Because these kind of people, they, they, much, they mostly think about price. So if you are charging them at a lower price, then they will be willing to test the product. Yes. And you know, they will see it as value for their money because it's a low price and the quality is high. So the next time they go into that market to buy that product and the price is high, they wouldn't want to hesitate to buy because they have enjoyed it. They understand the value, the satisfaction they could get from using such products. Yes. So it can go sales of new product lines very quickly. Usually the lower the, lower the introductory offer, the faster the growth in sales. So it's a new product that you're introducing to the market. Yes. Selling at a lower price might allow it to sell so fast. The third one, this strategy can put pressure on rivals. They may have to lower their prices or make an effort to differentiate their products. Either way, financial pressure is applied. Businesses using this strategy are better placed if they have lower costs. They must also resist the temptation of extending such offers for too long. If consumers become accustomed to low prices, they may be lost when introductory offer price expires as they are not prepared to pay the higher prices. Another advantage about penetration pricing is that when you charge a lower price, competitors might be forced to charge the same price. Or better still, find a way to differentiate their products. So finding a way to differentiate their product makes your product to be unique. Oh, uh, yeah. You get it? Yes. They are looking for a way to make your, their product different from yours. So at the end of it, they left your product all alone. They have two options. Uh, we are able to uh, uh, have the same price as you or uh, differentiate their product. If they differentiate, that means they have If they the differentiate product. their product, your product becomes differentiated. Your product becomes unique too. Yes. Because they have to make find a way of taking theirs away from yours. So you are taking your, you are taking, they are taking theirs away from you. They stand alone. Uniqueness, mm. that's the advantage there. Yes. Do you get it? Yeah. But you must not leave that price for so long because if customers are accustomed to buying at a low price, where you have to change it, it might become difficult. They will start looking for alternatives. Because quality, no, you won't, you won't charge the lower price for long. It's a new product, right? So you're charging the lower price because you want to you want to gain your position in the market, yes or no? Yes. So customers should not be accustomed to such a price. Things will happen in the market. Yes. Prices need to change. Yes. Inflation might occur. Yes. But when you leave that price at a low price for long. Increasing that price might be difficult for consumers to absor um, absorb. They won't, because they are used to buying yeah, at a lower price. To avoid the failure. That is the point there. I think it's clear. Yeah. Penetration pricing, the last part of there. Penetration pricing is used by a variety of industries, for example, sport clubs to attract numbers of members and satellite broadcasters to attract subscribers and drivers, drivers, driving schools to attract learners. So we use penetration pricing to attract them because this market is highly competitive too. And for you to, you know, to, to have a position, to secure a position there, you need those customers. Yes. And to get them is to charge a lower price. I think it's clear. Yes. The next one is competitive pricing, right? Predatory. Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Predatory pricing. Yeah, yeah. That one is allowed. So we'll go to predatory pricing. For predatory pricing or destroyer pricing, it aims to eliminate competitors from the market. It involves charging a very low price for a period of time until one or more rivals leave the market. In many countries, some forms of predatory pricing are illegal. Illegal, this is when a business is selling a product below the cost of production with the deliberate aim of forcing a competitor out of the market. 
this practice is legal because in the long term it can lead to a lack of competition in the market. As a result, it's if all firms have left the market except for the predator, the price is likely to be raised beyond the initial level. So for predatory pricing, you find a way of eliminating or reducing the numbers of competitors in the market. Mm -hmm. So to do this, you have to sell at a price below the cost of production, the normal cost of production. So selling at a price below the normal cost of production, it frustrates competitors. They don't make profit anymore. As a result of that, they just go, they just leave the industry for you. So the predator stays. The others will leave. Yeah, the predator they will leave because uh, the company itself is not very effective. But... If you are the one charging this price, you have your reason for doing it, yes or no? Yes, but... You are the predator here. Yeah. Well, it will it, it's not a loss for him. It, it's not. It's not yeah. But the point is, there's a reason to do for doing it, right? Yes. The reason is to reduce competitors. So you know that. As soon as the competitors leave, it's only, it remains you alone, right? Then you can become a monopoly. Then you can charge higher price to cover up for those losses. Okay, yeah. yeah. Do you get it? Okay. So most of the time, predatory pricing is illegal. It's 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 not ideal. It's yes. it's not a it's not a it's not an honorable way to compete. Yes. It's not a fair way to compete. It's it's unfair. You are charging a lower price because you want competitors to leave. You are charging a price below the cost price of the industry. So who wants to run at a loss? People don't want to operate to run at a loss. So as a result of that, they become frustrated. They leave the industry. And as soon as one, two, three leaves the industry, the output reduces. They become shortage. Competition reduces. Then you can charge higher prices. So this is what predatory pricing is about. Do you get it? Yes. So low price strategies are allowed if low cost businesses are prepared to endure low profit margins. For extended periods of time, they can also be used to sell stocks that would otherwise remain unsold or as means of breaking into a new market. Though sometimes they use predatory, pri or predatory pricing for products that they might not be able to sell. So instead of just sell, leaving it unsold, let's just sell it at any price so that it just leaves the, the shelf. They use it for it too. Is it clear? Yeah. Any question about predatory pricing? Is it clear? Yeah, yeah. So we have competitive pricing. For competitive pricing, so businesses take a very close look at what their rivals are charging when, when setting their prices. This approach is called competitive pricing and is likely to be used for business, by businesses operating in a fiercely competitive market. One approach is to charge the same price as competitors. The advantage of this strategy is that a price war is likely to be avoided. It is considered to be a safe pricing strategy. Another approach is for the market leader to set the price and all others follow. This is called price leadership. Price leaders are usually the dominant firms in the market. They may have developed their, their dominance through being a low cost of waiter or perhaps by building a strong brand over a period of time. So for competitive pricing, you watch over your competitors, what price they charge. And when you're able to understand the price they charge, you charge as the same price as they do. This, what, the advantage about this is that it will not bring about, uh, it will not bring about what we call it, we call it um, yes. price war. No, when there's price war, it means you are charging the price. Price war is an example of price war is this predatory pricing. So you are charging the price that others will not be able to charge. But now it's fair. Everybody is charging almost the same price. So it takes away the problems about pricing. So we are going to charge the same price and everybody is fair. Everything is equal in that market. So doing this, it could also allow businesses to start becoming efficient. You know, you start becoming efficient. How? You have to charge the same price as your competitors. And if you are continue, if your costs continue to rise, you won't be able to charge the same price as your competitors. So you need to find a way. You need to understand the strategies businesses use yeah. to be able to charge almost the same price as them. So you need to understand, you need to be efficient. So that you're because here you must not incur more costs than your competitors yes. to be able to charge a competitive pricing. So for you to charge the same price as your competitors, it means it means you have to be efficient. Do you get my point here? Yeah. So that gives us the price leadership, which means that we always charge the same price as that our price leader because that price leader is efficient. So we have to understand, uh, we have to be efficient too. Mm -hmm. You can't incur more cost and charge the same price as those competitors that are incurring less cost or lower cost than you. You run at a loss. So that's the advantage of competitive pricing. 
it makes businesses to be more efficient. Is it clear now? Yes. Any question about competitive pricing? Okay. So we'll go to psychological. So we'll go to psychological pricing. One common pricing strategy is to set the price slightly below a round figure. Charging instead of charging 99.99 instead of $100. Is the, this is called psychological pricing. Consumers are tricked into thinking that 99.99 is significantly cheaper than $100. Of course, it is not, but this psychological effect often works for businesses. This approach targets consumers who are looking for bargains. It is not likely to be used by businesses selling off market products. <laughs> so, for psychological pricing, you are, you are charging the price below, slightly below a round figure. So it allows you to, it allows customers to feel like, oh, the price is not, is not that expensive. You know, you think 99 is not the same as 100. Mm -hmm. But in all, you're not even going to get the change. Zero. But in your mind, you're buying it cheaper. That's psychological. I think it's clear. Yeah. You just want to beat the emotion of customers, the psyche of customers, making them to feel that the product is cheaper. Yeah. We go to factors that determine the most appropriate pricing strategy for a particular situation. Setting the right price is an important marketing decision for businesses. A number of factors have to be taken into account before the price is set. One, the position and the USP. A business can generally charge a higher price if its product has a USP or is sufficiently differentiated from those of its drivers. This is because many consumers are prepared to pay more. You know, I told you the other time when you're talking about USP, you should be talking about what? Price. I said that when I was correcting your. When I was collecting your, yeah, you see what they said here? Yeah? They said, this is because many consumers are prepared to pay more. It is all about when there's privatization and USP, just link it with price. It gives you your full mark. Do you get it? Yes. So this is because more consumers are prepared to pay more for the product with some individuality or additional features. So as a result, at the end of it, they say as a result, they may be able to charge higher prices. That's about product differentiation. Yeah. I think it's clear. Yes. Price is the of demand. So you have to check the responsiveness of your product according to consumers' behavior uh, of your product based on the quantity demanded. Is your product price elastic or inelastic? If your product is priced elastic, if the demand for your product is priced elastic, then you have to charge a lower price. If your product is priced inelastic, then you can charge higher price. Yes. So you get to know this through your calculation. If yes. it is less than one, if it is greater than one, then that determines the price you have to charge. I think the point is there. Amount of competition. So how fierce is the competition? Do you have lots of competitors in the market or not? If the, if the competitors are much in the market, then yes. you might as well charge the competitive price. Charge the same price as your competitors. Or it's like a price slighter, a lower, slightly lower than those of your competitors. Is it clear? That's for amounts of competition. We're talking about factors that determine the price we charge, right? Yes. The fourth one, strength of the brand. So how strong is your brand? If your brand is so strong, then you can charge a higher price because customers do not think about it. The, the only thing they see is they are, only, uh, they are already emotionally attached to your product, to your brand. So whatever you do in their face is an added value. So they will be able to pay. Yes. You get it? Yes. The sixth one, stage in the product life cycle. Product pass through a number of stages over their lifetime. Life for a, uh, life for a product begins with its development and for many products, ends when they are withdrawn from the market, saturation or decline. The level of sales that can be expected in each stage of over this time of time period is called the product life cycle. They are we've discussed it. So as the product passes through the different stages of this cycle, a business may adjust the price charged. So basically, what they are saying is the stage the product has to pass through will determine the pricing strategy you can use. Yeah. So as a, you had to say. When the product is first launched, a business might use penetration pricing to try and get established in the market. Yeah. Later, when sales starts to grow, the price can be increased. As that product matures, prices may be reduced a little in order to remain competitive. Alternatively, a business may use price scheming when the product is launched. This approach might be used if the product is new and has few, if any, rivals. Later, when rivals copy the product or bring out versions of their own, prices are likely to gradually decrease. I think the point is clear there. Yes. So you can use penetration pricing or price scheming when you are when you just start when the product is launched. But to use penetration pricing, maybe there are competitors in the market. But to yes. use price scheming, you have few or no competitors. Clear. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cost and the need to make profits. So this is cost plus pricing. 
So are you incurring more cost or you're incurring less cost? If the cost of production is less, then you could charge a lower price. Do you get the point you're making here? Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, so for cost and you need to make profit, you, talk, you are thinking about using cost plus pricing. That's the point there. Clear. We're going to change in pricing to reflect social trends. It is possible for social trends to have an impact on pricing strategies. For example, it could be argued that today's consumers are more aware and better informed than ever before. As a result, they may challenge the prices charged by businesses. They may negotiate prices or spend more time searching for bargains. They may also be less tied to a particular brand and consider instead of is consider the views, instead, consider the consider instead the views and experiences of friends and colleagues posted on social media sites. These days, customers are informed, they are aware, everything is exposed. They know much most of everything. They have knowledge yes. about prices. They could go to different pricing websites to compare and contrast prices. So they, they challenge your price. As a result, it becomes difficult for you to charge a price that they are not willing to pay. So as a business, you need flexibility to be able to charge based on the trends. Yes. So what are those places that, what are the things businesses could do? Online sales. Businesses have, have now they have to adapt to selling goods online. Many businesses are used traditional pricing strategies such as cost plus pricing. However, for others, selling goods online has provided opportunities for new pricing strategy. So why do we talk about online here? We're talking about online here because it becomes cheaper for the business to sell online than selling traditionally. Because traditional selling, you might have to pay for rent. You might, you might have to pay for a lot of things. But selling online reduces this cost. So customers now, they know that you can, we can buy online. Why do I have to buy from you? When I can buy from, from an online seller at a cheaper rate than yours. Do you understand? So you have to adjust by selling based on what is trending. That is the point they're making about online sales now. Yeah. Online sales reduce your cost of production. That makes you to sell at a lower price that will suit those that want to buy online. Start charging dynamic pricing. By, sell, by charging dynamic pricing, it means you adjust the price based on different situations. Based on the, you don't charge the same price with different with the same customers. You charge different price for the same customers. Different price for the same customer. Yeah, the same customers in regards that they want to buy the same product. They are the same customer buying your, the same product. We are charging different prices. Maybe because you see that this one is high level, is ink or is wealthy, or oh, it's not wealthy. It's basically not the same. But... Dynamic pricing means yeah. you are charging different price for the same product. Yeah. The same product. Okay, so now... students pay less. Adults pay more. Like that. That's dynamic pricing, flexible pricing. Yeah. Do you get it or not? Yes. So, or they might try to find a way of adjusting the product or service to fit in the price consumers are willing to pay. Do you get the hand pricing now? Like a flight to Mecca. Yes. There's you know economic what? class, there's, uh, there's economic, there's uh, business class, there's... No, I mean, like, economy. let's say economy. And it's about the period of time. It's like when you, when you go to Ramadan, it's the same product, same thing, same service. But it's it increases as uh during the peak period, the off peak yeah. period, yes? yes. That's still dynamic too. I think it's clear. Yes. They'll go to auction sales. For auction sales, they said, yeah, this is sales goes to the customer who offers the highest price. This allows sellers to get the best possible price for goods. However, the seller has to pay a fee for the use of the site. One other advantage of this method of pricing is that online educate online auction platform creates a sense that it is important to act quickly. Consumers fear missing out, missing a bargain if they wait too long. This helps to encourage more subs. For auction, this is selling to the highest bidder. So you wouldn't know the highest bidder. Yours is to come up with your own price. And because you are coming up with your own price, if other price comes up above your price, you won't be able to buy the product. So you always act quickly so that you can bid you want to buy the product. Yes. It's auction. Yeah, auction. Yeah. You sell to the highest bidder. That's the point. Yes. They are personalized. Pricing involves the use of data relating to a specific online shopper, such as purchase history, browsing history, demographic data, hardware, and operating system use, to set a unique price for that shopper. This data could come from a retailer's own database, be enhanced by a third party, or to be offered or be offered, or by the user's own computer, tablet, or mobile phone. The advantage of this method to businesses is that they can charge higher prices to those customers who are prepared to pay more. 
it has been reported that Amazon has tried this method of pricing. For personalized pricing, you get to know through information, data of past customers, those who are willing to pay, those that you know are, can, are capable of paying certain price. Those you know that always challenge prices, you have their database, then you charge them based on that. So whenever those customers come, those that do not challenge prices, you sell to them at a higher price. But those you know that will challenge price, you sell to them at a lower price. Mm. That's personalized pricing. Is it clear? Yeah. Is it clear, please? Yes. Then subscription pricing usually involves charging customers a regular monthly fee for the use of a service. This is for the TV and the satellites, like being sports and the rest. Yeah. So, our access to okay, this is not a new concept, but it lends, it lends itself well on the online shop, online magazines and newspapers. So, basically, here you're paying for subscription. So, you have access to that. You, view, you have access to it as soon as you pay for the subscription. The mention of Netflix here, you have subscription pricing. So you have different package for monthly. It's monthly, there's premium, there's compact and the rest. Yeah. So that is what we call subscription pricing, is it clear? Yes. So it depends on what you have, want to have access to. You want to have access to premium, that means you have to pay all. You have to pay the old cost. Is it clear? Yes. You know what we're talking about? We're talking about how you have to adjust to different social trends. So businesses have to come up with these different strategies, different pricing methods to be able to fit in to what customers will need. That's what we're talking about here. Yes. So they could use subscription pricing too. For subscription pricing, like I said, it allows you, everybody has their pace, their preference. You just have to make your package in line with different tastes and preference based on the research you have done. Full premium, compact, and the rest. Oh, for me, I do, I'm using full premium for my Netflix. That means the highest pay, the highest package there is. That's what I'm, I'm buying. Or that's what want a, a lesser one. So you just have to make yourself flexible to understand the trend in the market. That is the point we're making here. Yes. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to go there. Where? The main, uh, it's a... Yeah, the main advantage is that customers are tied to long term agreements. With the, yes, like my Netflix, I have I, I every now and then I just want to subscribe, I don't want to lose that. So I get used to it. Um, um, even if I don't want it, my household wants it, mm. so it's going to be for as long as possible. You get it, yes. So you get it, becomes part of your daily life. That is what they are saying there. I think it's clear, yeah. and that will increase your sales in the future. Because you will continue to have these subscribers. Long term lasting. Yeah. Yeah. In the future. Yeah. Is it clear? Yes. Then we can use price comparison sites. Many online shoppers make use of comparison websites. The sites simply compare the price of goods and services from a range of suppliers. Some sites are general, but an increasing number of specialists. For example, Trivago provides the comparison of hotel prices, Kaya, the price of flights, Carental, the price of car hire, you switch. You switch energy prices and mobile checkers for mobile phone mobile phone prices. Comparison sites are usually for consumers because they may be able to identify the cheapest deals available. So these sites might also be used by people who prefer not to shop online. They may check out prices online and then go to the store that's offering the best deal. Consumers should understand that no two price comparison websites are likely to give exactly the same results. Even if you provide them with identical information, this is because they may provide prices from different providers depending on which companies they have access to. So, price comparison sites. Here, you as a business, you put your price, you find these specialist sites, you place your price with them, you let them know your price, they help you to showcase it on, the, on their own website. So, doing this would allow you to let customers know that your price is cheaper than those of your competitors. Yes. Do you get it? Yeah. Any question about it? No. I think price strategy, pricing strategies end there. Yes. So the next class will be distribution. And you have the case study to do. Thank you. Where is it?